Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Well, Murphy's playing tricks with us as usual. It's been bright and hot and sunny and everybody complaining about the heat and no rain. But the day we decide to go out and shoot, of course, the heavens open up. However, I have this small spot of sunshine, so I'm quickly going to talk about today's story. It's an interesting battle and we did have these two cars together earlier on in the show, but it was a three-way battle at that point where the Go came out a winner. Now, the Hyundai has got a new heart a more powerful one. So it's going to make it a stronger competitor. So we decided to put it against the Go, which was the winner, and find out whether this new engine can actually tip the scales in the favor of the Eon. Does it have what it takes? That's what we're going to find out. Since the big change was under the hood, we hit the road straight away to see how different it felt. And you do notice the difference when you start up. The vibration from the gear lever is gone and it's a whole lot smoother at idle. But let's see what it's like on the go. This engine is a 998cc Kappa unit with quite a bit of technology. It's got dual overhead cams and variable valve timing for both inlet and exhaust valves. In effect, it produces 68 bhp and 9.6 kgm of torque which is quite a bit higher than its predecessor. So, it should feel quite different out on the road. And you do feel the difference on the go as well. That low speed hesitation is gone. This one pulls cleanly. Power feels better. And it's only when you mash your foot down and push it all the way to the red line that it gets audible. But otherwise, it feels more refined too. But you don't really need to mash that throttle down very often. So when you are pottering around at city speeds, this engine does feel better. It's a lot more drivable. It's happy to chug around in higher gears at lower RPMs. You can lift your foot off, put your foot down without really having to work the gears too much. But even when you do have to use the gearbox, it's light and slots into place smoothly. Now if we talk about pure performance, this Eon has improved over its predecessor, the 0.8 litre engine, by 2.6 seconds and that's quite a bit. Now despite the stronger engine in the Eon, it's still the GOES engine that feels peppier, punchier, put your foot down and it's always ready to leap forward. But it should be like that, it is the engine with more power and more torque. The only fly in the ointment really is, you know, when you slow down and from crawling speeds if you need to get an urgent move on, there is a little bit of hesitation before it gets going again. If you do decide to stretch its legs though, you will be impressed at the way the go gets going. It gets to the 100 mark in just 14.5 seconds. Still, the go is better off when it's not pushed flat out and you're better off shifting early and then it chugs along happily. It's happy to be in low RPMs and higher gears and it's really drivable in heavy traffic conditions. And whilst we are talking about the gears... Now this gearbox, well, in comparison, actually not even in comparison, it just is a notchy gearbox, you know, it's not always easy to slot in the gears. And this position of the gear lever takes a little getting used to. You can hear the gearbox whine especially when you slow down and even the engine is audible too. And those are not the only sounds to filter through. Can you hear the noise? That's the problem with the Go. It just doesn't feel refined at any level. You hear the engine. You hear everything that the road throws up at you, you hear the suspension, there's a lot of noises filtering through. In fact, the Eon on the whole feels definitely more refined. You do hear the engine on the inside, but it all seems better contained. The cabin seems better insulated even to wind and road noises, and the suspension works more silently too. Not only does the suspension work more silently, but it also irons out the road better, especially at low speeds. 
but as you gain momentum, the Eon starts feeling uncomfortable. The soft suspension makes it bob around quite a bit. Steering in comparison to the Go feels a little heavier, but it really is a light and easy to use steering and maneuvering in and out of traffic in the city is very simple. The problem with the steering is you're always having to vary the amount of input. It's not consistent, it feels numb, so it doesn't really inspire confidence. And with the soft suspension set up on a bad section of road, the Eon tends to bob around quite a bit, so it never really feels sure for it. You don't really use these cars at cornering speeds on a daily basis, but there are some places where you do go quicker and sometimes when you're on the highway, it's always more reassuring to have a car that makes you feel like it's not a small hatch. Now the Go steering is light and easy when you want to maneuver in traffic, but as you gain momentum, it weighs up really nicely. And overall as well, this is the car that just feels more planted, more stable. And whether we're talking about going round corners or just straight line stability, this is the one that inspires more confidence. On the economy front, the cars are closely matched. Now these are cars that will be primarily driven by the owner. But of course we all have families and we like to fit in people in the back seat and how comfortable they are matters too. Well, if it is space we're talking about, then the Go definitely feels roomier. You have more leg room, you have more shoulder room, you have more head room. You have that front bench-like seat, which gives you extra space for say like a handbag or something. And there is a bigger boot. The Eon may be short on space, but it's definitely richer on quality. You get a smartly designed cabin with two-tone plastic and it feels like it's from a segment above. Everything falls to hand easily too. The Go on the other hand makes you feel a bit short-changed. The seat fabric is all too basic and not great quality and even plastics feel a little low rent. The handbrake is a fidgety old-school pull type and switches for the passenger power window being only on the side of the passenger means the driver has to dive across to shut or open it. And it's the same for the manual outside rear view mirrors. The seat belts at the rear are non-retractable and the boot can only be opened from the inside. The Hyundai sells this 1 litre Eon in just one variant and it's really well equipped. In fact, when you look at the two interiors side by side, this one just seems miles ahead, far more futuristic, modern and just way better on quality. This variant comes with front power windows, keyless entry and internally adjustable rear view mirrors. The fully integrated music system with USB and AUX input as on our test car is also available but as a paid option. Likewise, you'll also have to tick boxes on Datsun's accessories list to bring your Go up to specs. The fully loaded Go T does get front power windows, a digital tack and a follow me home headlamp. The standard audio system basically plays music off your phone but still does not play the radio. There are no changes to the Eon except the engine so it's the same car on the outside too. It's a funky looking car with some really stylish sleek lines. But the Go is also quite a good looking car for a budget hatch. So on looks alone it's a close match and a personal choice. Well if this were a battle on space alone then the Go would definitely be a winner. It is the roomier cabin, it has the bigger boots so it's quite practical. Throw in the fact that it has a nice peppy engine, good driving dynamics and it has a good price tag at 3.69 lakhs X showroom Delhi. It makes quite a strong case for itself as a budget hatch. But that value price point does come with its share of compromises. The interior feels all too basic, quality is really not premium. Lots of the features very old fashioned like the seat belts, the handbrake lever and even ergonomically it's not the best. Now where the Go has its weaknesses, the Eon has its strength. That cabin really makes you feel special. It feels premium and from a class above, quality is good, it's well equipped, the interior is nicely laid out. And of course, this new engine has really made this a much more drivable car. It is priced at 3.83 lakhs and it is more expensive, 
but it does feel like it's from a category above. This is a car that you can happily spend time in traffic hours in and not feel like you're in a budget hatch. It makes you feel a lot more special. And so yes, the scales this time are tipped in the favor of the Eon.